And we can see it almost. Yes, you can still see it. Yeah, we can see your screen. Perfect. Per and let perfect. me do introduction before you keep going. So uh, our uh, this presentation will deal with the question. Can LLMs like GPT replace decision modeling? Quite controversial question, uh, but it's quite real today. And uh, it will be uh, answer to this question will be given by uh, Professor Van Sienen, commonly known in Belgium decision uh, table professor, and uh, by uh, Alexander Gussens. And I cannot help noticing that uh, thanks to the efforts of Jan and his uh, uh, KU Leuven colleagues, uh, Belgium has become one of the major research center for decision intelligence software. And hopefully research like uh, we will uh, hear now and we will hear another research tomorrow will contribute to this uh, strong Belgium uh, roots. Jan, take over. Okay, thank you, Jacob. By the way, I'm in Oslo at the Declarative AI Conference, which is co-located with Decision Camp. So my setup is a little uh, more difficult because I'm just on one small laptop, but I hope it will work and that the sound and image is okay. Yesterday we heard about Generative AI, GPT, uh, and the connection with decision modeling and so on. And today also I'd like to talk about some of our experiments together with Alexander and tomorrow also in, in declarative AI with people from another location at the university. And the idea is, of course, we were all surprised by uh, GPT and declarative AI. And the question immediately came up, do we still need decision modeling? Do we still have to build our own decision model? Or can we leave it to GPT, for instance, to build the decision model? Or can we use GPT to execute the decision model, to make a decision? We've heard it yesterday already. And also, can GPT explain why a certain decision has been taken and so on? So there are some, some urgent questions, some hot questions. Uh, we try to experiment, we don't have an answer yet, but we try to experiment with some of these questions. For instance, can GPT build decision models from text? Because we often assume that decision modeling is about you start with the decision model and then you do something with it. But the big question is, where does your model come from? Usually it comes from a procedure, a text, a law, some complicated uh, sentences and it's a human task often to build the decision model it takes a lot of time it's complicated it's, it's still error prone to build the model to build tables and so we asked ourselves maybe gpt can do it for us and it's basically split in two sub questions can gpt build the drd requirements diagram the, the dependencies, also the vocabulary, which will come later. And can GPT build decision tables? Not just simple decision tables, but correct decision tables and complete decision tables. These are relevant questions. And of course, the answer will be, yeah, more or less, but not perfect. And so the second question is, maybe, we don't need a decision model. We can just ask GPT to make a decision. We present it with some text and we ask GPT, here are some input data, make a decision for us. Would that be valid? And can GPT explain a decision? That's the, the second question. So there are a lot of questions. I use the word GPT, chat GPT, GPT-3, because 4 was not yet publicly available. So the tool is not that important. It's more, how can this generative AI be useful in a decision model context? Besides what we heard yesterday from, from uh, Alan and uh, the first one, <laughs> what's your name? Well, whatever, the first presentation yesterday. Gary. But Gary, sorry, Gary. 
All right, so some of these questions. First, building the decision requirements diagram, meaning we have a text and the text contains some sentences like this depends on this and th this uh, has an influence on that. There are ways to derive DRDs from text and you can do it in a multiple ways. You can use a pattern based approach. We have done it before. We've presented it earlier at decision camp where you look from for patterns. This is dependent. A is dependent on B and so on. Or you can use a deep learning approach. We presented it uh, earlier, not at the system camp, if I remember well, but there are some papers about deep learning to extract DRDs from text, from unstructured text. The references are at the end. And GPT has also been used to extract UML diagrams from text, BPMN models from text with various results. So it's a question, I think, to compare how does GPT perform for DRD extraction in comparison with these approaches, with deep learning and with pattern-based approaches? That's the first question. So we ask ourselves, can we generate DRDs given some textual description? Now, the textual description is, of course, not a document of 120 pages. It's a few paragraphs. We start, we start simple. And assuming we can do this, what is the quality of the DRDs? And how does GPT perform compared to deep learning approaches like BERT? You see some references there. So that is the, the basic setting of these experiments. We use some real text, small text, for instance, the text on housing loan eligibility personal loan eligibility, student support eligibility, fraud rating score, Obamacare. And we just took the text from the from the web without any changes. Only one change, very often a text has bullet points, meaning N. So we replaced the bullet point with Ns. And then we fed this text to GPT. An example of a text is this very small paragraph here. International students are generally self-supporting or supported by a scholarship. And our financial support is limited to Belgian nationals, although in order to, and so on, and so on. So this is a typical text which contains unless, if, sorry, <coughs> if not, except in those cases. So it's not a clear cut set of rules. It's a text which is a little unclear, as all the texts are. And then we compare GPT with deep learning. That is the idea. How do we do this? I won't go into the deep learning approach, but there is this pipeline here where you first do co-reference revolution, some pre -pro uh, resolution, sorry, some pre-processing, classify the text in terms of dependencies and logic and then try to extract decision dependencies. That's what I'm talking about here, decision dependency extraction. There's also a small part on logic extraction, but that's not the topic today in this question. You can find more details in this publication in expert systems with applications. That's the deep learning approach. And then GPT, for GPT, of course, as, as we heard yesterday, there are different temperatures. The higher the temperature, the higher the hallucination. So basically, we aim for a low temperature. And the prompt we use is, do you know the season model annotation? Can you create a DRD? Provide the DRD in graphics code. We give some examples, for example, of a text and a DRD. And then we ask GPT to provide the DRD in a formatted graph using ovals and decisions as rectangles and arrows going from the bottom to the top and so on and so on. And the results were nice. For instance, in the top left, the predicted DRD by GPT, temperature zero, or the student support example, where financial support depends on some general conditions, a decision, and 
depends on data, nationality and academic requirements. If the temperature goes up, the graph is a little less correct. And if you use deep learning, the graph is very sim similar. Here you see specific conditions per type, general conditions, so it's very similar. So at least this gives the idea that GPT is more or less able to generate a DRD based on a simple but real text. And of course, we did the experiment not on one text, but on a number of texts with different temperatures and so on and so on. And here you see the result. First question, can GPT derive the decisions, the name of the decisions and the input data, the concept? So basically we are asking, can GPT derive the concepts? And can deep learning derive the concepts? And it's, it's certainly not perfect, but it's, there is some progress here. Of course, deep learning like BERT will derive the concepts in a better fashion, but it's still more or less okay. 87, 86, 86 percent. It's a start. It's nothing we would use automatically, but it's a start to take a text and derive some concepts. And then second point, can GPT derive decision dependencies? A depends on B, a decision depends on another decision, a decision depends on input data. And you see some numbers here, it's not bad. Deep learning is still performing much better, 97%, 91%, except in only one case where the precision is higher for GPT with a temperature of 0.4 than for deep learning. That's one exception, but in general, deep learning will perform a little better. We use all kinds of measures here, precision, recall, the F1 score, but I'll, I will not go into detail here. But in general, we can conclude that yes, GPT can generate some DRDs given a textual description. It's a start, it's not perfect. Of course, it's dependent on the temperature values for lower temperatures. GPT offers meaningful DRDs, but still struggles with identification of intermediary, intermediary decisions. Using higher temperatures resulted in semantically wrong DRDs and hallucination, as expected. In this study, with a few small texts, all the models are outperformed by deep learning, except in one specific case for one metric. So it's, it's okay, it's useful, it's a start. I wouldn't say you can use it automatically or, or without human intervention, but it's a start for human intervention, before human intervention. That's at least some answer to the first question, can GPT be used to derive the DRT from text? Second question, can we derive decision logic? And the decision logic in this case, I mean decision tables. Of course, there's more decision logic than tables, but we tried to find out if GPT can automatically derive and build and check a decision table. There are some other approaches, again, pattern-based approaches where you look for patterns like if this, then that, or approaches where we try to extract rules from legal documents or deep learning approaches also to extract the DRDs and the logical statements from text. So there are some publications, but of course this problem is still harder than the DRD problem. So the question we ask is, can GPT derive decision tables from text? And of course, in order to answer this question, we have to go in a number of steps because first we have to figure out, can GPT identify the information items of a decision table, the columns? Can GPT identify the values, the possible values of each of the information items? If yes, can GPT construct correct, complete, and overlap-free decision tables? And is GPT able to reason with the decision tables, assuming that the tables are correct? This is what will be presented tomorrow. 
at the RULAMEL conference here in Oslo. GPT-3 for decision logic modeling. I will give you a big view of the results. What we used is a GPT prompt like this. Below is a decision description. First question, what is this all about? We ask GPT, do you know what we are talking about? And then we ask some questions. We do a small test, give some input data and ask something. And then we ask, what are the variables? And for each input and output, give me an overview of the data types to see if GPT knows what the data types are, what the possible values are, also for numerical values. Then could you generate the DMN decision table? In a certain form, make sure the rules are exclusive. Is the table complete? And if all this goes well, answer the following question, which is test two. So you see nine questions here. And using these nice, these nine questions, we try to figure out if GPT knows how to build a decision table from a text using some examples. That is what the paper tomorrow is about. And as I told you, I'll give you some short results. We had six examples. We used four temperatures, uh, leading to 72 experiments trying to play with the examples. In figuring out the information, items, and values, GPT performed reasonably well. Accuracy 0.5. It had difficulty in inferring implicit values. For instance, it could find out that there are excellent and good grades, but it could never, it could not find out that there are also bad grades, then, which a human will do automatically, of course. Sometimes it's difficult to know what GPT knows. So a definition of a concept, does it come from GPT or does it come from the text? If you use a common concept like the, the body mass index, BMI, we, we didn't know if GPT already knew this or derived it from the text. So much about the information items and value and concepts. Then for decision tables, the results were much worse. Accuracy is almost nothing. Completeness is almost nothing. And sometimes GPT uses a value of a question to build the decision table instead of the question or, or the item itself. So the, there the results were not so good and there is a lot of hallucination. And as we all know, wrong calculations and the numerical and logical results, of course, are not there. So for building decision logic using GPT, the results were rather disappointing. This is GPT-3. Maybe it's much better in four, in five and so on, but you see there are a number of prerequisites. You have to find the, the correct information items, the values, the rules, the tables, the completeness, the consistency, and then you can start reasoning with it. And that, of course, is a, is a very tough job. That was question one. Can we build, can we derive DRDs from text? Can we derive logic from text? results were not that positive. So the second question is, maybe we don't need decision models. Maybe we can ask GPT, we can provide the text and ask GPT to make a decision. And if yes, maybe GPT can explain that decision. Why explainability? Because there are so many questions in decision making, if we make a decision automatically, the user still has a lot of questions. Why did you make that decision? What do I have to do to obtain that result? Why do I not obtain that result? How, do, how did you do the reasoning? Remember last year and even the year before, we talked about the chatbot, the DMN chatbot. And there's a lot of talk about chatbots to give advice and explanation to users. And the way these chatbots are built or the way explanation is given to users is often in call centers, frequently asked questions, in online help, all expensive solutions and not very 
satisfying solutions. So organizations might be tempted to just give a text a problem description and use it as some kind of automatic help desk to provide answers. And instead of putting the text on the web as some kind of answer, maybe G can, GPT can answer the questions. That's a question I heard yesterday also in one of the presentations. Maybe we can just use GPT as some kind of intelligent information retrieval device. We ask a question as a user and GPT will give us that answer. That's something we want to examine. If we do this, are the results correct? Are they satisfying? Do the users like these results and so on? And then secondly, if not, because the answer will be no, if not, maybe GPT can be combined with the DMN chatbot. Because DMN can take care of the reasoning, has the logic, has the dependencies, and then GPT can be used to take care of the user interface, for instance, to produce natural language for the reasoning and for the questions. So that's another type of question. Based again on some examples, you might remember the examples from other publications or other presentations. For instance, first the vaccination example. A few years ago, when you had to receive the vaccines, there was there were priorities, and it depends on how old you are, where you work, where you live, what type of job you do, when you will get your vaccination. Okay, this is some piece of call it law in this vaccination text. And of course, the, the user who reads this text still has some questions. Why do I get my vaccination only in priority group three? What do I have to do to get in priority group two? How did you determine this? What age should I be to be assigned to group one? Uh, I don't understand why. So all these typical questions based on a text. That's one example. And so the research questions now are, assume we have this problem description. It can be a law, it can be a procedure, it can be a text. Can GPT provide the answer to a question without a decision model, just giving it the text and then we start asking questions? Because that's what we expect nowadays from generative AI. Or that's what a lot of people expect from generative AI. The system has some kind of knowledge in the form of text. We start asking questions to the chatbot and we receive an answer. And people assume this is the correct answer. That's research question one. Is this correct? Is this a good answer? And secondly, because the answer is no, if not, Maybe we can improve the answer by using GPT as some kind of user interface, not to do the reasoning, but to do the user interface and then use the chatbot to really do the logical reasoning and present the result. And GPT again can translate the result in human language. Th these are the next two research questions. How did we, did we research this? First, we have a text. And we answer, uh, we, we ask some questions. The prompt in this case is I provide you with the following text, for instance, the vaccination textual description. Assume the, follow, the following information to answer some questions. For instance, I am 65 years old, I have high exposure, I have this and this and this input data. Provide for each answer the concerning question and then a number of questions. Remember, we have questions like how, why, why not, and so on, and so on, and so on. So we provide the text, we provide some input data, and then we ask some typical questions. What are typical questions? How to get a result? Or why did I get a certain result? Why did I not get my loan approved? Or how much? Can I deviate from certain values and still have the same result, sensitivity? Or what if I would change some input data? 
or what should the result, what should some input data be to obtain a certain result? So imagine this, you have a text, a, a customer calls some kind of help desk or support and ask some typical questions. And these are some typical questions. How can I get the result? Why do I get the result? Why not? How much can I deviate? What if this would change or that would change? And the, the problem now is, assume GPT has the text and we ask these questions to GPT, how correct is the result? Simple text, half a page of text. Here are the questions again, for two examples, a discount example and the vaccination example. You can imagine the discount example, it depends on how much you have bought and what type of customer you are and so on. And the questions then are, how much value can I still buy? How long will I still be the same client here if I don't buy anything? What if? What if the total value is larger than this? So these are typical customer questions to, let's say, a discount help desk or an insurance help desk or a bank help desk. We categorize the questions in terms of classes. Remember the five classes, how to, what should, why, what if, and number five, that was what should. So these are typical questions. So we have these examples, two examples. Then let's say 10 questions. We use GPT and we ask these 10 questions. What are the results? What we see is of all the questions we asked, in only two cases in green, the result is correct, complete, and not too uh, redundant. For instance, the question, if the loyalty is this and this and the value is more than 10, then the answer is correct here in green. In all other cases, the answer was either incomplete or incorrect, which is even worse, or containing too much redundant information, meaning it's not helpful. GPT just reproduces the text. It gives a very interesting result, but as a user, it doesn't help me. So that's the first experiment. We use GPT, we use some existing texts, we ask help desk question, questions, and we want to know if GPT is able to answer these questions. And the results are very poor. So organizations might be tempted to say, okay, here's a problem description. I will leave it to GPT and I use GPT as some kind of automatic help desk to answer questions from stakeholders. The, typically the, the miracles we expect from chatbots. And what we see is that GPT is very good at repeating information and providing all types of relevant pieces, but it doesn't answer the question. For instance, if the question is, what age should I be assigned? Should I be to be assigned to group one? GPT said, you must be a resident of this and this and this, or you have to work in a first line care occupation. That's all true, but it's not relevant. Because the age, the, the correct answer should have been, any age is fine. It depends on vulnerability and exposure and risk. And that's not in the answer. So as you, could already imagine GPT is very good at producing language. It gives a very real life impression. It produces nice language, but, but the result is not correct. Or at least contains uh, redundant information or is not to the point. And that's not what we expect from uh, a chatbot. So the second question is, maybe we should use GPT not to do the reasoning and answer the questions, but we should just use GPT as some kind of interface. And with interface here, I mean, we have this chatbot, or we can easily build a DMN chatbot that can do reasoning. And now we ask GPT, if the user asks a question, what type of question is it? So GPT is good at recognizing questions, and the question is a type of reasoning scenario. So if the user asks a question, 
Then we asked GPT to label the question into the five classes or six or seven classes. Is it a how-to question, a why question, a what-if question, or a what-should question? Because once we know this, we can use our reasoning mechanism of DMN and the DMN chatbot to answer the question. And it's easier to do it with GPT because if we ask the user to formulate the question in one of the five classes, how to, why, what if, our experience is that it's difficult for users to formulate it in the correct way. Users will not always use this specific wording like what if I want to obtain that result. They will use more free language, which is a little harder for the uh, DMN chatbot to recognize, but GPT is finds it's easier to recognize the question. So the next experiment is, what if you would use GPT to recognize the question? Okay. And then use a chatbot. Remember last year and two years ago, we had this chatbot here, which is basically nothing else than we have the amend model. Let's use a reasoning mechanism, the decision knowledge reasoner, Uh, we used uh, an API from our fellows in the same universities, same university, but any reasoner, okay, will do. Where the user interfaces, uh, inputs a question, we try to figure out what is the question, and then the reasoner will answer the question and produce the result. And as I was telling, it's not always easy for the dialogue engine to understand the question. So let's use GPT to understand the question here, which is the intent interpreter, and divides the question into the classes like how to get, why, what if, what should, and so on, and then start the reasoning. Because our DMN chatbot is not user-friendly enough to understand all types of questions in natural language. So if we do this, on again, a number of examples. I won't go into details of the examples, but you can have a look at it later. The vaccination example here, where we have two tables, and a discount example, where we try to determine the discount based on the client tier, and then some input data. And the discounts are here. So we have questions like, if this and this are the input data, what is the discount I get? And then the typical questions, how can I get 8%? Why do I get this percent? What if my client tier would be different? What if this, what if that, and so on. These are the typical questions. Now, if we use this setting, then we ask GPT to identify scenarios. So now the prompt is, there are five classes of questions. I give you three examples for each of the classes. I will provide you with sentences and for each sentence, return to me the expected uh, output as a class. So I want to know for each sentence, for each question, what class of question is it? And we want consistent answers, so temperature zero. If we do this, you see all green. Because now we have the same examples, we have the same questions. GPT is able to classify the questions in the correct class. What should this be? How to get this? Explain me this. So at least now we understand the question. And now we can use the DMN chatbot to start the reasoning, to look up the answer, which is logical reasoning. We can do that. And to give back the result to the user. And this is a much more promising way to answer user questions than use GPT for everything. So the basic idea now, but that will be hard to read, is we have a chatbot. The first part of the chatbot is the DMN chatbot, where the user says, OK, I have a question. How many years have you been a customer? So we, we first answer some questions, ask some questions to the user. And then the user has the opportunity to ask questions. Why, why not? And so on. There we insert GPT. 
and we ask GPT, what did the user actually ask? What type of question was it? GPT will say it was a why question. Once we know it's a why question, we can start the reasoning and provide an answer. That's basically the idea. So GPT is used to, can be used automatically or semi-automatically identify the reasoning scenario. But the logical reasoning, the question answering is left to the DMN chat. Just an idea of playing with GPT. So summarizing, what about GPT and decision modeling? Yesterday, Gary had very good examples of what can GPT do once you have the decision model. Here we're asking the question, if you, ha if you don't have your model yet, but you only have a text, how can you use GPT in dealing with the text? building a decision model, deriving a decision model, executing a model, answering questions with the text and so on. And the conclusion from these small experiments is, yes, GPT can generate DRDs, but there are better alternatives, deep learning, for instance. Deriving decision tables from text is still difficult. GPT performs poorly. Tomorrow there is this presentation in, in RULAML where you will or can hear all the details. Then combining GPT with the chatbot provides better explanations than just asking GPT, at least GPT-3. Maybe it will be better in the future, but there are no guarantees. And GPT was able to correctly identify the scenarios, identify the questions, so we use it as some kind of user interface and improve the user friendliness of the current chatbot, which is able to answer the logical questions. So once you have a DMN model, even derived with GPT, you have a DMN model, we have the reasoning features of the DMN engine and model, we can answer questions. Once we know what type of question it is, we can do the reasoning and we can even use GPT to produce the results in a user-friendly way. Which is a better solution than just using GPT uh, without too much consideration and hoping that GPT will answer your questions as some kind of chatbot. That's what people often hope, that generative AI now will answer all the questions, has all the knowledge, and we can use it in a customer service desk. Our experiments show that the results look nice or the, the answers look nice, but are not correct. And that's, of course, not what we want. All right. Uh, I refer to some papers which were in the presentation or tomorrow, or if you Google us, you can find the details about the experiments. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you, Jan. Very interesting. And you try to put positive uh, twists to kind of negative results, right? Oh, okay, you're always a kind man, but uh, <laughs> so let's see what people think. They have questions. Jan, Jan, Jan Purses. Go ahead. That was a, that was a very uh, interesting presentation, uh, Jan. Thank you. Um, I wondered, I had two questions. Um, in your initial set of experiments, your question based experiments, where I think you you managed to get some questions answered correctly. The green and the red. Um, yeah. I think you had something like three out of 20 correct questions there. I wondered, yeah. um, did you find that um, sometimes the GPT had a tendency to answer questions using common sense rather than confining itself to the information provided in the prompt? And um, if so, whether that was um, a contribution to uh, some of the failures you had? No, there was only, if I remember well, uh, Alexander is also online to answer more, to give more detailed uh, answers. But if I remember well, it's only in, in the definition part that GPT had some uh, previous knowledge about concepts, but not so much in the logic or not so much in answering the questions. 
it was not confused with its own knowledge because the, the results or the answers seem to come from our text only. Right, so what, I, wondered, I wondered whether you think that was because the domains that you answered the questions in were um, very much ones that, that have a great deal of internet coverage as opposed to say, um, certainly my experiments with um, legal documents was that um, GPT quite commonly reverts to common sense, which is often wrong in the yeah, law. Yeah, I can imagine. It's often yeah. a contradiction of the law, in fact. Yeah, probably the examples were so uh, confined, so limited to discounts and uh, vaccination, if I remember, that probably there was not too much common sense to to retrieve knowledge from. Mm -hmm. And and secondly, for the final experiment you showed, um, do you have any idea how well this scales to larger, more complex decision models? Do you mean the the reasoning part or the scenario? I don't no, the very the very final part where you combine um, the classifier, the question classifier, with the chatbot. I wondered, as a whole, how does this system scale with um, with the complexity of the of the underlying decision model? Uh, we don't know, but I can imagine uh, yeah. that if if your DRD is complex and you have to start reasoning over, let's say, ten levels of decisions, then this will become more complicated. It might it might scale different. It might scale difficultly. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. To maybe I can give a a more complete answer if I may interrupt, Jan, shortly. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Um, so the, the chatbot makes use in our case of the API developed by our colleagues that also developed the CDM, CDMN. And um, it makes use of an actually of an older version API in which we actually reason behind the, the scenes actually with CDMN actually. And um, I asked him how it scales because it's actually a very relevant question. And he told me, let's say, for example, you have 100 tables of five decision rules and that should still work pretty well. So I think it's a matter of how the tables are connected and how complicated the model itself is. So that in itself is already a good indication. And he immediately also told me that they are still, a, they recently published a, a, an improved version of that MPI as well. So it, it will probably get better, but but I, I guess the fact remains that this remains a, a um, first of all, a problem that is not all. It's a yeah. It can explode, right? Regarding uh, domain mm. easily, and it also depends of your of your problem itself. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah. And I I presume these these are hierarchies of decision tables only. There's no um, no other structures are permitted like um, feel or relations. No, or we we basically limited to decision tables. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. thank you. More questions? Uh, if no questions, let me defend a little bit uh, uh, GPT and in general the approach. In, Jan in uh, January, so it's uh, nine months ago, uh, I I wanted to try uh, something similar to what you did, and I huh. gave uh, GPT at that time uh, uh, your vacation days example in plain English, uh, defined by oh, you, yeah. uh, Jan. I remember. And uh, yeah. yes, and I just published results without any comments. Uh, first of all. I was extremely impressed that it understood this plain English and convert and I asked to create decision table and it's created decision table and it looks amazingly nice until you start looking inside. And it was, I would not call this hallucination, it's exactly what you said, it's uh, incomplete and wrong and a lot of uh, logical errors inside, but still, the amazing thing was uh, it understood natural language and converted into decision table, uh, DMN-like decision table. It was really, really impressive. But uh, then, uh, since then, uh, I, I know that there is a progress, and uh, uh, if you look on what uh, Gary did uh, uh, with his prompts, 
and he took not a toy problem, he took serious uh, problem, and results still were very good. Uh, so it's possible to control this, but I have almost uh, no wonder, uh, no doubts that it would be improved down on the road. So uh, I just posted your slides on uh, Twitter, negative and positive uh, also, because I don't want to discourage people uh, or think that we are protected with our DMN approach. Uh, still answer to your question, or maybe you can comment uh, how would you answer is DMN in jeopardy? Uh, uh, for example, I saw answers. Why, why should you talk about declarative decision modeling at all if uh, GPT will provide all answers now? So we don't care how it's done. It's done yeah. correctly and that's it. So what uh, what your predictions for future? Uh, the predictions are positive, but in general, I would say there is nothing as bad as an answer to a question that looks very intelligent and very user friendly, but it's wrong. And that's what we still often see. It gives a good impression. The language is fine. It's it's it looks very nice, but you don't get the answer to your question or you get the wrong answer to your question. And that's not what you expect from a serious help desk or service desk. I prefer it to be correct. Maybe it, it doesn't look that that nice, but it should be correct. If I call my bank or my insurance company and I ask a question, I don't want a user-friendly answer that is wrong. So at least for now, we still need DMN to have more correct answers. Maybe in the future, if GPT or generative AI combines the logical facilities and the mathematical facilities, and unites all this, maybe then this is okay, but for the moment it's not okay yet. I, it's in my opinion. Okay. I don't Do know how often questions? you call help or service desks, but it's very hard to get a correct answer. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just want to make a little comment that in the future, uh, when we go through this uh, dissolution uh, phase, I'm sure we will end up with uh, uh, our decision modeling tools uh, still in place, but they would be on new level, like yesterday, uh, Denis commented uh, about uh, natural language interface. We will, what is nice about our current system, they solved uh, actual problems. And as uh, James Taylor yesterday said, they put uh, a framework for very good definition what this de decision actually does. And it points us exactly where we can apply uh, the uh, GPT. For example, this arrow from uh, knowledge source to decision is uh, really dashed error is really a nice uh, description so drd is uh, really useful our uh, decisioning execution <coughs> environment very useful and we just have to learn how and where we can apply uh, right uh, generative ai technology yeah side okay. by side side by side yeah so thank if we, we don't have any more questions thank you john and uh, let me stop recording and uh, 